Hi, so I thought I would do a little video on the CR5 Pro H and a couple of things that I've found useful. So certainly one thing I found is the stock fans that's with the CR5 Pro H, which is the hot version, so you can do high temperature printing. They're just really not very well made. If I pull one out that I pulled apart, Yeah, so if I show you on this, so if you, I had a problem the amount of times I was getting clogs on this, uh, A, because the actual cooling area is only that central bit, that's actually pretty small, um, I went and got a micro, micro Swiss, all metal hot end, and actually the cooling fans expand all, all the way across. Whereas this is like, it's actually a tiny little area. And when I pulled this apart, even that central piece of metal, the, the silver bit that runs through it, it's actually really crudely finished. It's not like even all these little bits as well. It's not fully, I don't know, like steel. It must be aluminium or something, but it's just very crudely finished. And it's cheap. I mean, that's why Creality is what it is. It's, they make... Uh, 3D printers from fairly cheap components that you can bundle all together and then you can replace the bits as well and they're, they're quite cheap to buy but I found I was getting problems with it and then I got a real issue where I think I rounded off the nozzle in the heat block and then I don't know I tried to take this bit off and I don't know if you can see I've literally rounded off that's meant to be a hexagonal shape and it's rounded off because it's just it's not very well made. It's kind of soft metal. I mean, I'm sure people will be fine with it, but if you're like me and you like to probably uh, give things a little bit of an extra push and break them. So anyway, I, I haven't continued with that. I went with the Micro Swiss all metal hot end, which if I've got the box, that's the one that I got. I got it on Amazon because generally Amazon you get good returns and it's quick dispatch. This is in the UK, by the way, in case you hadn't realised from my accent. Some people say I sound Australian. I don't think I do. Um, but yes, yeah, so I went for the, the one with the four millimetre nozzle, which is, in fact, this nozzle here, which is a steel one. Uh, just about... Uh, a steel one. It's trying to focus on my face which is okay, um, but in order to fit the Micro Swiss uh, hot end, you have to do a few little adjustments. And I wonder if I can show you before my, oh no, my print started. But you can see all those green bits are actually adjustments. Um, I found that the stock fans, which are these ones, are not very powerful. And actually when you join the Facebook group, there's some people who have fiddled with this a lot more than me and one guy in particular, Herman, recommended upgrading your fans to those higher power ones. I can't remember the code for them, but um, they're very standard Creality ones. Again, you can get them on Amazon. And then in order to change the direction of the, the airflow, so you've got one coming down onto the, the hot end block and then one that's coming round the, um, I don't know why my printer just did that weird movement. Anyway, and then one that's coming around the actual uh, hot end itself. I need to reprint these in ABS because I'm currently printing ABS and the temperatures are so high that they're warping a little bit. But yeah, I mean, in order to actually fit the Micro Swiss nozzle. Now, I don't know whether I got the wrong one, but the, the thermistor heating element didn't fit inside the block so you see on this it's got a very large bore hole that's where the heating element goes you can kind of see some of the residual um oh it's like putty stuff um thermal paste that's what i mean you can see some over there it's actually very big and i guess that's how it gets high temperatures on the hot end very quickly 
So my block wasn't quite right. I mean, you probably could get the right one. Maybe I just picked the wrong one or <laughs> do what I do, which is bodged it. I actually drilled a hole in the uh, Micro Swiss one, shoved the, the hot end in there. It doesn't go all the way through. Um, and then I just put some heat shrink around the exposed block of the heating end coming out. And I can't really show you that well at the moment, but I have got some more pictures on the Facebook groups for the CR5. Um, and it works. I haven't had any problems with fluctuations in temperature. It heats up quickly and I didn't do any adjustments to PID, which I, I understand. Now people who are better at this will probably correct me. But I understand doing your PID settings is making sure that the, the printer is actually getting to the right temperatures. Well, basically, is it actually, I don't know. I don't know what PID is. But anyway, you could Google that if you wanted to. But I didn't adjust any of that. And I instantly had a big improvement in the clogging. I was finding I was getting really issues with, with clogging in the nozzle. So that improved. Um, probably part of that is probably my temperature settings and things might have been a bit off. But it did improve. And then I took it one step further and got one of these bad boys. So the Diamondback nozzles. Oh, my camera's gone AWOL. It's gone crazy. Diamondback nozzles. I'm just storing my um, steel hot end from the Micro Swiss in there. Again, a very good hot end. But honestly, if you, if you want to take this printer to the next level, get yourself one of these. I think it was about 100 pounds on Amazon. It came from America, actually, um, is where they're made. And it actually came really quickly in the UK. And what, what they've done is they've put a diamond tip. I obviously can't show you because it's in the printer, but there's a, a diamond, uh, it's like micro bits of diamond that's been molten together to make a tip to the nozzle, which means that it is incredibly strong. Like they do videos on their sales marketing where they take like a Dremel um, cutting blade to it and like, you know, and all the other nozzles wear down, even the steel, um, even the diamond tip will shatter. But the, uh, sorry, not the diamond tip, the ruby tip, mm, that right, the ruby tip will shatter. Um, there you go, you can go, it's made in the USA. And yeah, when they did it with the diamond tip, it goes really red and not much happens. So it is legit. It's expensive, but they market it that it will be the only nozzle that you'll ever need. I'm not, I don't get any sponsorship from any of these people. You probably can tell as I'm hashing my way through it. But um, it is great. I have not had clogging since I put it in. So whether that's because it's, a smoother finish to the inside of the nozzle or the diamond in there just its properties are such that the filament just doesn't create deposits or burn or I don't know they probably got all the jargon about it but it is the number one thing that's made the biggest difference to this printer aside from hot end assembly so micro swiss all metal hot end upgrade the fans and get your fan shrouds. There is 3D Colts designs for those fan shrouds. I had to modify it a little bit just to fit my dodgy sticking the thermistor outside the block malarkey, but you could do it yourself easily and get yourself one of the Diamondback nozzles. The other thing that I got, which I thought was quite cool as well, is I got these on Amazon. So the CR5 bed is a very strange size. I think it's I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's around 300 millimeters, whatever. And if you want to buy a new glass plate, it's expensive. Why you would need to, I, I wouldn't bother. I mean, even if the, the surface, you know, kind of dotting on the glass plate comes off, which I have scratched it off by accident, you can flip the plate over, use that side, or you just get the occasional slight marking on the underside of your prints. But this stuff is PEI plates, so it's got a texture PEI surface on that side, which I haven't yet used. And then it's got this kind of like vinyl effect kind of stuff here, but it's very smooth. I've got another one here that I haven't yet used. This one, look at that, shiny. I think a lot of people in the bamboo labs use these a lot. 
and you get them for I think it was about like 15 20 quid or something on Aliexpress it comes within I think it takes about 10 days it's nuts how quickly they can send these things through that's to the UK and it comes with a um, magnetic base which sits on the bed and it sticks really nicely you can see it's gotten very hot with the higher bed temperatures that I'm using and therefore it's kind of slipped a bit now some people have cut the boards or the plates to fit the exact size of the printer but actually I found when you've got these plates on the the um, printer in all honesty like they overhang a little bit and but you can still close the door and it's quite nice when you're pulling these off the bed you have a bit that isn't hot so you can literally take it off um, I mean I suppose that's what that edge is for but it's quite nice having something you can put your fingers on and then you know um, pull it off I tried this with ABS and um, somewhat left some ABS smeggy stains all over it if you do find that you end up with filament that's stuck to the bed don't try and get it off with a spatula -y thing scraper print over the top of it and the melted filament on top of there as it cools will pull it off I found that actually was quite handy to know, but you can see I've somewhat trashed this one a little bit. It's amazing how thin that coating is actually, and um, it's not just vinyl. When I look at that close up, it's kind of metallic underneath, so that must be the PEI, whatever that means. If you're doing um, PLA, really good, Lo leaves lovely finishes. Um, I just wipe it clean with a bit of uh, just alcohol and you know, microfiber cloth, stick it on. You don't have to use any adhesives. I really like using this stuff though, especially when I'm doing ABS, 3D lac, it's good stuff. Um, nice spray bottles. Some people talk about using like glue and stuff. It just sounds like a sticky mess. That stuff you spray on and comes off easily with um, isopropanol alcohol as well. But yeah, the cool thing when you get your your um, PLA off the bed you just that and it pops off you're supposed to wait for them to cool down properly sometimes I get eager and ping it and then you'll bend the, the print I just can't help myself get too excited um, what else is some cool stuff that I've done to this printer let's have a look switch it around so you guys will probably know that you have a real issue with this printer of where the hell do you put a camera? I know people like to use Raspberry Pis and stuff. It's a bit beyond me that I'm more of a, I like the physical, um, you know, um, technological stuff. But when it goes into like software, all that stuff just sounds very complicated. So what I've used is in that top left corner is a ring camera, you know, that made the ring doorbells. Um, initially I tried to stick it in that corner with Velcro but when you're doing ABS it gets so hot. Funnily enough my ABS is not printing as well as I would like it to right now. Why is it doing that? I'm gonna have to restart that it's just uh, being a bit of an ass. Sometimes I find that with this machine one time I will set the Z offset and it's perfect and then I literally go to the next print and then it's not quite right. What's that about? What, what is that? I still don't understand that with that with this printer. It's very odd. It's almost like you need to do the the offset every time. Oh, if anyone can answer that for me, let me know because this is starting to, I can just see it's a little too low. And the annoying thing is when you're in the adjustment bit here, if I try and move it up, it won't do anything. You can only move down. Uh, it's just, ah, uh, creality very annoying these software problems anyway so I put the ring camera on top of a little selfie stick so it's propped up there because yeah with the velcro it gets so warm in there with ABS it just melted off and would fall off you can't really see the first layer of short prints but it's quite handy later on and then I can look at it on my phone other stuff that I did I put some little heat sinks on the stepper motors I've got some table uh, table cable tensioners they're printed in ABS you print them in PLA again they just break or get too hot and break so that's a nice way to tension the cable there 
anything else that I've done. So when I got the printer, the guy who'd owned it previously cut holes in here and here, which meant that you could access into the board when you're flashing it, um, the firmware and stuff. So it was actually quite handy. Um, but yeah, I think that's the main stuff that I've done that probably would interest people. Oh, the other thing that's a good tip, you see where the BL touch is. I was having issues with my BL touch where the bed was just only going down. If that ever happens to you, just check your connector to the BL touch is actually connected because sometimes it comes loose. And what I've done is put a bit of hot glue on the connection as well. Um, I think that is everything. So yeah, I'm still learning how to dial it in. I've gone from, I feel like I've mastered PLA. I use the eSum PLA Plus, and then I moved over to ABS, and you know, it's a whole nother learning curve. Um, the other thing that I use is a little filament dryer. I always have it on. I figured it's just another thing that stops that becoming a variable. And then I've also got around the back here, this is just to help stop um, the Bodum tube slipping out. I found that was a, a file on Thingiverse or something. Um, never had a problem with it, but you know, someone made it. Um, the only other thing is there was a file in the very bottom there. It just keeps that cable from, it, I just felt it was quite vulnerable ne next to where that turning wheel is. So it's a little plastic thing in there that just supports it. Again, I can see that it's looking a bit droopy because I printed it in PLA. But, yeah, I think that's the main things. Yeah, there you go.